Hey everyone, this is Zan, and welcome to Dominion 6, at a glance. Today's nation will be Nidavanger, a nation of frosted, shape-shifting barbarians boasting deadly, animalistic warriors, effective mages, and wildly powerful sacreds. They somehow manage to be the most straightforward, but also one of the most complicated nations to play yet. And no unit is wasted in the Nidvanger unit roster, which, with only two exceptions, is recruitable entirely outside of forts. They have the weak but easily massable Cub Warrior if you need extra siege strength, Crow Clan Archers for cowardly tactics, Wolf Clan Reavers for stealthy raiding, Bear Clan Warriors for heavy berserking shock infantry, Nidilvas, which can only be recruited in Castle, but they are these elite formation fighting, dual wielding warrior women and your semi-immortal capital-only Needbat, who, thanks to the Soul Scar ability, has to be killed multiple times before actually staying down. And the number of times is half the candles in the province he's recruited. To make math easy, if you have seven candles in your capital, because you set your prophet to preach there up to seven early on, he will have to be killed four additional times before actually going down for good on his fifth death. Hope that makes sense. The commanders for Nidvanger are also mostly recruitable outside of forts, including your primary mages, which is interesting. Your workhorse commander is likely going to be the Nidhurse, who can lead a lot of troops, albeit without formations, and is stealthy. But then your mages, you're actually going to have want to have a good mix of all three of your non-fort mages. Now, again, you if you want to, you can build forts and recruit all the same. That's okay. More power to you. But you have the Scythe Render Apprentices, which have one path and a big variety, but mostly they're just really inexpensive researchers. You have the Bear Clan Scythe Renders, who are Nature 2, Earth 1. Please keep in mind these paths, and they can turn into giant bears. You have the Wolf Clan Scythe Renders, which are Water 2, Nature 1, and can turn into wolves, stealthy wolves. You have the Nid here, who normally I don't talk about these Sacred Commanders, but in this case, since his Soul Scar ability is equal to the candles in your capital, so if you have 10 candles, he has to die 11 times, he has one job and one job only, and that is to win every single arena that ever pops up. You gear him out with a great short of sharpness and some other crazy items, and he will win every single one, most likely. Finally, your capital only mage is the Crow Clan Scythe Render. These guys are fantastically powerful, very fantastic paths, and random even more paths, including blood. But they are perpetually old, so you do have to keep in mind something about that. Usually you're going to want to twice born them or take some sort of disease resistance bless. They can also change into crows, which are stealthy, and move around the map easier that way. There isn't too much to talk about the Needvanger summons. They have two, which is the Great Bear, which I think you get 15 of these for six nature gems. And honestly, that's a pretty good deal. They're not really good per se, but... That's an efficient summon. And then you have the Drog, which are a little bit more expensive. You don't get as many. But what they are very useful for is adding a Fear Aura and a Chill Aura into your armies, which your units are all cold resistant. So this should actually be pretty good for you. I recommend adding a handful of these into your armies. The only challenge is going to be adding that Undead Leadership. And onto the recommended spells in the nation. Ideally, I could make two of these charts because your spells in the early game are going to differ wildly from your spells in the late game, but for brevity, we're going to keep this on one chart. To start, you're going to have this almost a holy trinity of three spells that is going to define your early game with this nation. You're going to have Barkskin, Moss Body, and Quickness. And ideally, early on, your Bear Clan mages, all that they're going to cast is going to be Barkskin and Group Barkskin. And your Wolf Clan mages are going to be casting Moss Body and Quickness. And you can just keep adding mages because you will never have enough mages to support your entire army. But the more of your units you get these buffs, the more powerful your army in general is going to be. You can never have enough of these. You can also do Gift of Formlessness, which synergizes a lot with Moss Body and is a very powerful combination. As you move on to the second half of the game, you're going to introduce Earth Magic or Higher Nature Magic through your Bear Clan Mages, but really we're going to talk about your Crow Mages, which are these crazy guys. I can make a whole video on them, but you really you're going to want to leverage their High Air, Astral, and Death Magic 
to make a big impact on the field. So early on, you really don't even want to use these guys because they're so expensive and their spells might not be as high impact as you want. So you're going to want them to do Fog Warriors or Arrow Fend, which are naturally protective spells of your units. They're all going to need to be twice borned, likely, unless you have some other way of keeping them alive because they're all old and you don't want to lose them because of how strong they are. Shadow Blast is an example of a very impactful spell that they can do. And finally, Winds of Death is going to be one of these late games, hyper-powered spells that can really define your nation. And you're able to do that really, really easily, especially in the magic phase using Teleport or Cloud Trapeze. Onto the Pretender design of the nation. I think you should mostly focus on having some sort of bless for your need bath, but not necessarily one that starts up early because, well, they're rather flimsy early on and need some magic to keep them alive. Meaning you can safely go for something like a dormant or even an imprisoned bless and just rely on your scales troop to expand. Now, if you go dormant bless, my personal opinion is that you really want to kill a neighbor as soon as you can. So get something strong. And in both of these blesses, I recommend having a lot of unforded infrastructure to produce Bear Clan and Wolf Clan mages. So in the case of a Dormant Bless, you're going to want to take all those mages as soon as you hit Alteration magic levels and send them out to fight. Whereas if you take the Imprisoned one, you're not really as much of a rush to kill somebody, so you can leave some of them researching or even get some apprentices. Regardless, your Need Bath are going to be kind of your late game tool. To survive, so definitely have something strong on them. Worth noting that the Righteous Wrath Bless triggers for every soul scar that they lose, not necessarily on their final death. That's pretty darn cool. Finally, for the gameplay, in your early game, I highly recommend prophetizing your scout and having him preach in the capital instead of your commander, so you can get to seven candles as soon as possible. That way, when you recruit your Need Bath, they have four Soul Scars each, and they can actually fight. Before that, I probably wouldn't recruit any. For expansion, I'd recommend using the Nidilvas if you have the scales to do so. Otherwise, Wolf or the Bear Clan, they do okay. Magic-wise, you really want to rush Alteration 5. There's no questions there. You need Moss Body, you need Bark Skin, you need Quickness, you need Gift of Fort Formlessness. And then you need Infinite Mages to cast all of that. Personally, I don't want to build forts early on because your out-of-fort recruitment is so strong. But if you are going to mix them, try to plan ahead of time. Because if two forts are touching the same province, it won't have any resources, and then you can't recruit commanders out of it. So do keep that in mind. Feel free to actually kill someone straight up just using the divas and quickness, quickness spells. You don't really need your sacreds or a lot of magic to do that, but it's absurdly strong. Also... The same way you're not recruiting the Need Bath early on, try not to recruit the Crow Clan on the first year. They all are old age, they're not really going to have really good spells, or at least not impactful ones early in the game. At least not compared to your Wolf or Bear Mages. And then anytime you see an arena, you want to send the Need Here, which is the Sacred Commander, to it with either his base gear, or I recommend a Great Sword of Sharpness if you have one. And that usually is going to win most arenas. Moving into your mid game, you have two options. You either boom with your researchers that you're building in every unforded province, or you go kill a neighbor, which both of them have those unforded province researchers, but in one of them, you take all of your mages and you kill someone, casting quickness, moss body, and bark skin. And the other one, you just kind of sit back and get a research advantage. Finally, in the late game, Bro Clan are some of the most powerful mages in the game, actually. So try to leverage their high air, astral, or death pass to cast powerful spells that other nations communion for, and they can just do it on their own, or maybe with power of the spheres for help. The mid, mid baths provide exponential value the more buffs you put on them and the more soul scars they have. However, you do want to try to preserve them for larger battles, because although they may not die on the battle outcome screen, them losing soul scars is technically attrition. You can also try to break into blood in this nation, but I recommend brute forcing it with scouts rather than using your crow clan mages. They're really expensive, they should really be doing more important things than trying to blood hunt as a blood one or, if you're lucky, a blood two. And that will be the end of Nidvanger. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you forgive me for my awful pronunciation on just about everything in this video. And I do guys, I do want to celebrate with you guys real quick. Uh, 
through the end of mania video and now i guess this one i've actually hit a thousand subscribers which is super freaking cool i never considered youtube to be a thing i could really do so it's all just super exciting for me to be able to share this with everybody and the comments the comments on the last three videos have just been so heartwarming all day every day so thank you all for watching and i hope to see you next time